Well, Derek, have you, uh, have you grown tired of answering questions about your balls yet? It's going to be a popular topic. No, my balls can never be enough. We can always talk about that, though. <laughs> Let's talk. I mean, after your last fight, I mean, an incredible comeback, of course, but physically, how are you feeling after that? I mean, that was not an, an easy fight for you. You got rocked a couple times. You got tested all the way to, to 15 minutes. I mean, give us an idea how you were feeling physically after that fight. I was feeling relieved that it was over with. You know, I was happy that I got the win. Um, my eyes was a little messed up. It just felt like um, I had soap in my eyes the rest of the fight whenever I got hit in it. It was just hard, hard for me to see after that. But other than that, I was feeling good. Did you ever figure out what exactly? I know we watched the tape. Was it a poke or was it a punch? Do you know what? I haven't watched the fight since. I watched the post-fight, but not the fight itself. Yeah. What did you do after the fight? I mean, did you take a couple of days to... To, uh, to, to relax, to, to celebrate? I mean, give us an idea of kind of what it was immediately after the fight. Uh, we went to the Hakkasan. We drank a little bit. Um, snored a few lines to help my weight stay down. Sure, as, as you do. Yeah. <laughs> Other than that, it was good. Everything's good. Well, talk about how then it goes to you fighting for a world title because it was funny. I mean, in the immediate aftermath, you were joking a little bit, saying that, you know, I don't even want that fight. It doesn't even make any sense. So how, how did how did this all come together? Um, you know, I guess they seen the heart. You know, I believe they, they believe in me and they know that I'm coming and have an entertaining fight. No matter if I'm getting my, my ass kicked um, for 24 minutes in a fight, just know that one minute, if I get that one minute, um, 30 seconds or whatever left in the fight, then I'm going to come out victorious, I promise you. Yeah. You've always said throughout your career that, you know, I don't even do this for titles. You know, I do this for supporting my family and, and, and you know, to take care of them. But now that the title's on the line, does that attitude change at all? Um, just not just the title on the line. Whenever I signed my contract and seen the zeros, then it was like, okay, I can start training now. Before, like I told you all before, I really – I don't stay in the gym like everyone else does. All my opponents, you know, it's pretty obvious. Like, after the fight, I'm, a, I'm laying all on the floor. I'm tired, ready to go sit my ass down somewhere. And, um, you know, but this fight right here, I've really been training all day long, drinking more water than I need to be drinking. And it's really taking it more serious, you know. And it's not going to be no excuses for myself. Win, lose, or draw, you will see all my all. Overall, Derek, what's been the reaction from that post-fight post interview that you had, in particular the Donald Trump thing? Was that just mm -hmm. – did you just come up with that off the cuff? Did you thought about that beforehand? <laughs> no, nah, uh, it, the just, connection and the, and the it was just freestyle. Which, you know, me and Donald, we talked about that before back in the day when we used to golf <laughs> back in Houston. And it was just something that I told him I will mention no matter what, no matter how bad everything is going in the U.S., that's all. So you had a conversation with him, right? Yes. You really did. I mean, that, that no. Wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Second of No. No. It's so. just whatever. You know, I just say whatever. It's, it's always the same thing with you guys. You know, that y'all ask the same questions. So I just get tired of answering the same stuff all the time. So I just say whatever I want. Well, Derek, what do you, what do you think was more influential in you getting this shot? The, the knockout or the the hot balls comment? <laughs> Probably the knockout. The knockout. Yeah. yeah. Was that one of the funnier things you've ever said? Probably on TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, before, before this fight was announced, you said, you know, because you know the DC's got the Brock Lesnar fight lined up, and you said, listen, man, I think the only reason they put this fight together is if, you know, if he assumes that he's just going to run through me, or even the UFC may assume mm -hmm. that he's just going to run through you. You said that right before it was announced. So, I mean, is that the yeah. way you're coming to the table? You feel like the UFC, DC, they feel like you're not really a challenge? Not really the UFC, just DC. I believe that he's thinking that it's going to be an easy fight for himself, you know. But you go ahead and think that, you know. I'm, I'm. It's crazy that I, I even made it this far with the type of training that I, I have been putting in before each and every fight. You know, I really don't. Like I said, I'm, I'm serious. I don't stay in the gym all day like just about all my opponents do. You know, I stay probably 30 minutes. 35 minutes and five minutes on my phone posting memes and stuff on Instagram. <laughs> but no, for real though, but this camera right here, I've been really at the gym all day long.
Okay, so the 30 minutes, I assumed that was one of your classic jokes. You really I, only put yeah, in 30 minutes 30 a day? 30 minutes. My, my coach is busy, you know, but it been, um, we've been stepping it up. We've been doing a lot of crazy stuff that I don't like, but we've still been doing it. Are you going to come in with a little chip on your shoulder knowing that D.C. is probably looking at you as an easy payday? Oh, not at all. I always come in with a chip on my shoulder with any guy I'm fighting anyway because I feel like they're trying to – um, take my life away anyway. So that's what I always think about whenever I step in the cage. It's always life or death situation to me. Let me ask you, if you're, you're a professional athlete and you're a dangerous guy in there, and this is what you're doing for a living, and I just wonder, why would you only spend that, that short of time at, at training? Uh, why wouldn't you take it more serious? Because then you would know that you gave it 100%. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I didn't um, – 100% retired because I didn't give myself, I never gave myself 100% chance, even in the training and stuff like that. I wanted to um, to see what it's like to really train like a mixed martial artist then go out there and perform like one. And so I believe I'm, I'm heading that way now. Derek, you talked to me ahead of your last fight about your back problems and the, the rehab that you've gone through with it. Ahead of this fight, are you able to do any of that? I mean, is there even time? Oh, the, my back is good right now. Um, I'm still day by day. Um, it hasn't been hurting so far since my last fight. Um, the injections that I got, I believe, is um, still working pretty good. And how do you prepare for this Olympic caliber wrestling that you know you're going to have to face with Daniel Cormier? You're bringing in somebody kind of like, <laughs> like build like him that has the same kind of pedigree as him to prepare? Oh, well, not at all. You know. Just as long as I'm 100%, I'm in good shape. I don't care what he could do or what he thinks he's, he's going to be able to do. Just I'm just worrying about myself. I don't care. Derek, you were medically suspended by Nevada after the last fight. What was the process of getting that cleared? Because I think it was until November 6th, then the fight's November 3rd. So do you have to go through like Nevada to get that, that cleared? Hmm? The medical suspension? Mm-hmm. What was that process? Did you have to go to a doctor? They had some like paperwork over Yeah, there? I went to the doctor, got everything cleared, everything checked out pretty good. Um, basically saying that I'm good to fight, my health and everything is good. My heart is better than what they thought it would, would be, and I'm in great shape. Do you feel like you'll be 100% going mm -hmm. into this fight? I'm, I will be 100% going into this fight. DC said that he's not going to be 100%. He has a bad hand. Is that a mistake on his part, you think, to go into a fight with you with oh. a bad hand? I go in every fight with a bad back and overweight and damn near diabetic. <laughs> so it doesn't matter to me. He's coming in a fight with just a bad hand. That's a good thing for him then. Derek, is this more an opportunity that you really want or is this one that you just can't pass up? It's just one that I can't pass up because I know it's a lot of guys in this division that probably deserve a, a shot more than um, I'm getting, you know, then I probably don't deserve a shot more than – Stipe should have got the shot, you know. But, you know, ain't no telling when the next time I'm going to get this opportunity, so I had to jump on it anyways. And as a guy who has talked about, you know, the money and the reason why you do it, like, is this paycheck significant enough that, that this could be your last fight? No. No, I don't think it would be my last fight, but the paycheck is pretty good. Can you what compare it to what to, to some of your others? Like, compare it to, to other ones you've received, how big is it? Oh, it's probably more than I made this year already. What did it mean for you in Houston when the hurricane relief and what you did there? I mean, you jumped in. You you went down and you made it happen. You made good things happen mm -hmm. down there. And now you got a hurricane, and obviously the one in Florida, they're going through that, so it's on the minds of people right now. But that that was important to you, wasn't it, to go down there and do that? Yes, for sure. Um, it was just one of those situations where my neighborhood didn't flood, but the people around my neighborhood flooded, and, and um, I – I just didn't want to stay in the, home, in the house all day and not doing anything and not helping no one and stuff like that. And plus, I had I have direct TV, and so any kind of rain or wind or something like that, it'll mess your TV up. So I couldn't <laughs> stay home and watch TV. <laughs> so I just wanted to go out and help whoever I can and don't be bored. But you did. I mean, you physically got out and you got the truck out and you went and helped people. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Hands on. The, the first day, it was just like, okay, just help the people in my neighborhood and surrounding areas. Then you know, a few days later, I'm just stuck going miles out. And like a week later, I was stuck going to a different city that was close by.
you keep in touch with any of them? And do they follow your career? Like, uh, I keep in touch. Yeah, I keep in touch with um, Trader Troop. He he um, always keep me up to date with everything and how much he appreciate my help and stuff like that too. Is your your eyes are red? Is that still residual from the fight from twelve days ago? Or? No, I'm just leaving Joe Rogan's show. Oh, I'm a little high right you. now. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Yeah, it's from the fight. Are the Astros going to come back from a three three one deficit? Um, next question. <laughs> yeah, we're going. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it tonight, right? Tonight, yeah, yeah. we got it. Derek, is, is the vision impacted at all? I mean, like I said, the, the redness, is it, just, is it just on the surface? I mean, is the vision impacted at all? No, it's no blurry vision. I can still see. You see you lost a little weight, too, you know. Hello. You don't got the blue shirt on today. <laughs> <laughs> but I can see pretty good. You got, you got, you got the vision now. I want to ask you, too, you know, since this fight was announced, uh, people went back to that press conference interchange that you two guys had. Uh, I want to ask you what happened backstage. You know, DC kind of put it out there that you – Seemed like you wanted to knock him out, and the, you know you made the, the joke about the chicken and, the, and that. But what happened backstage? I mean, were you trying to get into his head a little bit, or let him know that hey, I'm I'm coming for you at some point? Yeah, I just because it was the perfect time. It was just me and him in the hallways, and so I just told him I'm coming for that belt, and he chuckled or whatever, and talking about you better work on that cardio. I said, shit, don't worry about my cardio. I got that. And that was about it. You think he, he, he took? You don't think he took you serious at that point? Oh, if he don't take me serious, that's his mistake. You know, I want him to take me serious. I don't want no excuses or nothing like that. And I just really can't wait for that night, anyways. Derek, the uh, the memes and the videos you post on Instagram. Where do you get those? Do you like seek those out? Do people send them to you? Right? Like, where do you get all these? I don't know. Just it's on the internet. I don't know. So you just go. On the I just find whatever I think yeah. is. Interesting to me or funny to me, and just post it. You know, even if it's cringe, and I just still post it. Derek, you said it's crazy that you've made it this far, considering how how little you train. I guess. How how do you think it's happened? Why do you think you've had so much success? I believe really it's just my heart. I got probably the most heart than any guy they see on in the UFC. I believe it's my heart and my power. If this if this opportunity hadn't come up, like what would you be doing this week? Um, you say this week? Yeah. What would you What would you be doing like right now instead of sitting in front of us? I'll probably be on LA. Huh? With Joe Rogan podcast at LA. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably be in LA right now. Baked. <laughs> I'm in hell right now. Probably. <laughs> Have you put a final dollar figure on how much that right hand was worth? You got your win that? bonus that night. You got bonus. Now you get a title shot. Put, put a dollar figure on how much that, that right hand that you landed was worth. <laughs> it's probably a, a million. Probably about a million. Yeah. If you get the belt, what is the first thing you're going to do? Um, probably put it in my closet. I don't care about the belt. But I will, I will try to win the belt, though. But I really don't care about it if I get it or not. Do you care about like uh, headlining card at Madison Square Garden history oh, there? Do you care about any of that? Not at all. But it is a cool. Um, I'm sure it will be a cool experience because um, Ali, Mike Tyson, all the big name boxers fought there and made their mark in the sport. So it will be cool. Though. Was that was that a right hand you learned from George Foreman? Got to ask you that. I mean, that that looked like the right hand he threw against Michael Moore. Beat him when he was waiting. No. You trained with Foreman. No, I think it was the right hand my wife landed on me three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you just said that right hand. Yeah, okay. my wife, she nice. hits hard, yeah. Derek, I know you say you think Stipe deserved it more, but do you think people don't give you enough credit? I mean, 9-1 and one in, in, in your last 10 fights is pretty impressive. I mean, do you feel like people maybe aren't giving you enough credit that you do deserve this opportunity? Oh, I don't care if they give me credit or not. I don't care. I'm not a mixed martial artist. You know, that's probably what they're looking at, and I don't blame them. I'm not. You know, I don't train like mixed martial artists. I don't respect the sport like everyone else does. You know, I'm just a brawler. So I go in a fight just to fight. I don't care about the submissions and the technique and all that and the bowing and showing respect. I don't give a damn about none of that. I'm just coming in to fight. After the knockout and the post-fight speech, does anyone reach out to you, any celebrities, anyone tag you on Instagram or, or social media that you thought was cool and unexpected? Um, a lot of people were tweeting about, about 
everything. Yeah, it was a lot of a lot of celebrities. It was crazy. Um, like the one that stood out the most probably Lil Wayne. That he says he's now he's um, a big fan of, of me now from that. So that was cool. You got something planned to call out Lesnar should you win the title? Because he was going to be next for DC, so that could be your first title. Oh, well, it doesn't matter who who's next. I don't care. You know, I still believe Stipe probably should have been next because they were all of the people that had lost their belt, um, they got the title shot right back as soon as they lost it, you know, they got the rematch. But um, it is what it is, but I'm happy, I'm grateful for the opportunity. But going back to what you've been stating, you fight for the money and the Lesnar fight would be bigger. Yeah. Than Miocic. Well, if it was Miocic or Lesnar, that's fine. You know, whatever the USC want to pay me for, that's, that's fine. I don't care who's next. Do your kids recognize or realize how big this fight is for my dad? Kids don't, are they saying anything? My kids don't give a damn. My kids make more fun of me than the social media people that's trying to bully me on social media. My kids the one. They always making fun of me, so it don't matter. Wait, who's trying to bully you on social media? Everybody, man. You don't what? see it? They bully me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> What do you think of uh, the poster for UC230? Do you see it? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I like that. I like my head is bigger. <laughs> <laughs>